Hello there, friends. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Welcome back to Today in 10 or Less. It is September 16th, 2013. And today, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty of this whole writing thing before we actually get into it. We're moving into this last phase of learning about kind of what a writer does in order to be who they are as writers and connect with an audience. I asked you to come in today with the fire starter with what do you have expertise and explain. Now expertise, remember we talked about last week as being something that you're an expert at. Now we established that we're all experts at ourselves, so I told you you couldn't have your way out on that one. You couldn't, you could not take the easy way out and say, oh, I'm an expert on myself. You had to come up with something else that you really had a lot to say about. And also, I asked you what types of creative writing you could use to deliver, to impart that knowledge to somebody else. Now, I had a lot of people say, oh, sports, oh, video games, oh, this and that, but how can I use creative writing to get my knowledge out there? I'm... I really love video games with storylines. How in the world could I possibly use that to write? Well, did you ever think that maybe you could write the script for a video game? Take a look at all those RPG, those role-playing games where you're like, even some of the first-person shooter games, which I don't tend to like, but that's all right. I don't have to. To each their own, right? Take a look at those role-playing games and think about all the storylines that are there. Well, somebody had to write all of those storylines before the computer designers and programmers could actually go in and write the code, didn't they? Well, why couldn't you do that? I'd say you probably could. If you're an expert at playing video games like that, you probably have a lot of ideas for a video game you'd like to see. Write it. I'm not stopping you. Why should you stop you? I also had you guys discuss not only what your strengths were knowledge-wise, but also what your strengths were as a writer. See, some of us don't have strengths in all the same areas. For me, I have a really hard time organizing my thoughts. I'm, I'm, that's not, I'm not very good at it. But a couple of you in the classes said you were really good at organization. Well, guess what? I'm going to come to you when I need help organizing my stuff. We're going to do a peer review, and your strengths will help out my weaknesses. Now, maybe you're the type of person that says, well, I don't know. I don't really have a strength in anything. Really, you're never strength in anything. You can't come up with one strength. I bet you could. And it's important to be reflective. Some of you fought me on this for a little while. But when we got down to it, you said, hey, you know what? I am pretty creative. Or I am pretty organizationally talented. Or you were able to come up with something. It's important to know our strengths and to know other people's strengths. I, in fact, made each and every one of you share what you were an expert at. Because it's important. I'm not the only teacher in the classroom, guys. You're teachers as well. You're going to be teachers as well. And I'm going to pair you up as I start to learn who you are more and more with one another based on your strengths. So that two people together have twice the strengths that they would have had on their own. Writers need to learn how to do that. That's collaboration. We talked about that yesterday or last week as well. Now today we started to work on the writer's process because we had a discussion and we said that a lot of us are used to not necessarily turning in our best work or work that we're proud of. Why? Why are you turning in work that you're not proud of? It doesn't make sense. I get an assignment. It's due in two weeks. And I have to make sure that that assignment is turned in in two weeks. Now, the responsible thing to do would be to put in my full effort and do the whole writer's process on it. But most of us, and even if I'm being honest, maybe me at your age too, and I missed out on a lot of learning by doing it, but we just kind of wait around and procrastinate, and then the day before it's due, we go, oh no. And we have to slop something down that we're not terribly proud of, that we didn't get out of the assignment what our teacher wanted us to get, and we turn it and we go, I hope I got a good grade. You know, you don't have to do that. You don't have to hope that you got a good grade. You can actually know that you got a good grade. How? By following all directions, taking a look at any rubric your teacher has given you, and by following the steps in the writer's process. I asked you to be honest, and most of you told me during class today that you don't really use the writer's process. Now, it seems to me that that's a logical way to improve your writing. 
I asked you how many of you wanted to be proud of what you turned in. Everybody raised their hand. And then when I asked you to keep your hand up, if you're always proud of everything you turned in, I saw a lot of this. Guys, you can always be proud of what you turn in. All you have to do is follow the steps that you know make you successful. Well, we started going over the steps that a writer takes to make sure that he or she is successful. And we got through two of them today, and they're the two that go together. Pre-writing and drafting. Now, pre-writing. The word pre means before. right? We know that the word pre means before. Pre-writing. Well, how is that a step in the writer's process if it's before the writing? It's because it's the most important step. That's where you get all of your ideas out, and you organize them. See, the purpose of pre-writing is to organize your thoughts before you even start writing. Because a lot of people don't know where to start. And then they get going and they get stuck. Well, a lot of the time it's because they didn't brainstorm and they didn't plan out what they were going to do. See, the goal is that we want a solid skeleton. We talked about this in class. We want a solid skeleton around which to flesh our writing. That's what pre-writing does. Is It gives us a target. It gives our work something to stand on. If we had no bones... We collapse in a heap, a gelatinous mass of muscle, fat, skin, and hair. That's all we'd be if we didn't have the structure of our bones. To me. And, and you know what? Our skeletons look an awful lot alike. Each of us. Our skeletons look a lot alike. It's our flesh that makes us different. What's around the skeleton that makes us different? See, in order for us to exist as people... We have to have a framework. We have to have a base. Just like a building that has no foundation, a body that has no skeleton can't stand. Writing that has no framework, that has no purpose, or has a confused purpose, or has not been organized, cannot communicate, cannot connect. So the big question we ask ourselves is, what in the world am I trying to say? What is my author's purpose? And as soon as we can establish that, as soon as we can take our thoughts, put them down, organize them in a way that we know we can use them to connect with an audience, now we can begin actually writing and drafting, which is the second step in the writer's process. So we want to expand on all of these ideas that we have. Now some of the ideas are going to be useful, some are not going to be useful. But the fact that we've pre-written allows us to determine which are useful and which are not, and then we move on to drafting. See, our goal is to create a workable sketch of our ideas. Now, it's going to be redefined, it's going to be reimagined, it's going to be all of those things, but anytime an artist does a really detailed painting, oftentimes what they start with first is a layer of just pencil on the canvas to get an idea, an overall sketch, an, an outline of what the overall work is going to look like. It's going to be painted over, it's going to be changed, it's going to be recreated, it's going to be reimagined, but first it has to get down on the actual paper. That's what drafting does. So the question is, what do I think is the best way to communicate that purpose? That purpose that we came up with in the pre-writing stage, now what do I think is the best way to communicate that purpose? Some very important steps in the writer's process are coming up tomorrow. We're going to learn about them tomorrow. But for right now, what I want to make sure you're doing with the homework tonight, which is to brainstorm ideas for your personal narrative that's all written down there along with the fire starter that we have on the board that will be right below this post, my goal for you is that you come up with five to ten ideas for your personal narrative. This is going to be our first shot at doing a project together that isn't something you did over the summer or something that is ongoing in class like those fire journals are. This is your first shot at doing a fully complete work that you can be proud of. So you're going to go home tonight, or you're home tonight already and watching this <laughs> on the computer. Five to ten ideas that you can tell for your personal narrative. That story that is from your life, personal narrative, I want five to ten ideas. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for coming back over and over again. I'm loving that I'm getting hits from this country instead of other countries. Not that I don't appreciate all of you in other countries who are watching my videos, because I certainly do. Thank you again. Have a wonderful Monday.